probably one of the most deserved losses of the season for the Seattle Mariners. What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into the Seattle Mariners post-game recap. Mariners lose tonight 3-2 to two in extras to the Marlins. They fall to 44-34 and 34 in the year. Looks like Houston and Texas are both going to win. Your division lead is now 7 over Houston, 7.5 over Texas. Before I dive any further, do me a favor. Smash that like button. It helps tremendously. If you're new here or lurking, hit subscribe and comment your thoughts down below. All three are free and easy things that just free things that help support my channel a lot. Think about becoming a channel member. There will be a live stream next week that I am doing. Mark, you won the contest for the shirt a couple weeks ago. I just want to let you know your shirt has been sent. So it should be arriving to you hopefully fairly soon. Um, congratulations on the win. So we do live chats. We hang out. We talk ball. And then there's some contest giveaways sometimes. So think about becoming a channel member. But yeah, really deserved loss. I mean, I could spend this whole video just talking about the top of the eighth, and that's that might be what I do, because this offense was atrocious tonight. Absolutely atrocious, and it has to be better. I, I don't know what else to say. And it's not just something that, CJ, they need to add at the deadline. They, they do. You're not wrong if that's where you're coming from. But nobody, you still need your big guns. JP, Julio, Cal, if you, Mitch Garver, Mitch Hanniger, whoever you want to throw in there, have to be better. That eighth inning, there's no deadline acquisition that's going to help you there. Maybe Polanco comes back and he's in there for Demo, you know, but JP's going to hit. Julio's going to hit. They're not, those guys aren't getting benched. The guys are going to be off the roster if you make, you know, a trade or guys like Robles and Bliss who are good tonight. I'm not saying that they're going anywhere. I'm just saying like that's who they're going to replace on the roster. You know, it, it's, you're, you're not benching JP Crawford. If you're not going to bench Julio, you're not going to bench, and you could bench Dylan Moore except for Polanco, but those guys are going to play. They are going to be in those tight situations. There's no addition that's going to get you a run in that eighth inning. Again, I please you know understand what I'm saying. They need to make moves, but they also need the current guys to be better. So I see everybody on Twitter going, see, they need to acquire a bat. They do, but these guys have got to be better too. It won't mean anything. There's only so much one guy can do. Only so much. Mariner scored two in the first two innings. And then they just fell asleep. I mean, there wasn't even a lot of hard contact. I don't even care. Like in the 10th inning, Mitch Hantinger and Dom Canzone both hit the ball pretty hard. I don't care. Like I do, if we're sitting back at the end of the year doing evaluations, yes, hard contact matters. I care about it. But right now I don't. Listen, if there's a put up eight runs and then Mitch Hantinger had a hard line out, I'm more sympathetic. Same for Canzone. But, and I'm not blaming them. They're, they weren't necessarily, I mean, well, Mitch Hanniger was not very good today. Canzone had one at bat. Um, so I'm not like just picking on those guys. I'm just making a point that like, I just, I right now I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. You know, oh, they, they, you know, and I'm an exit velo guy, but I need runs. I need <laughs> runs on the board. I do not care how it happens. Just awful. And then even the way they lose, one pitch, base hit for Tim Anderson. Great throw by Canzone. I feel like Cal should have made that play. Maybe it short hopped him a little bit before coming in, you know, to catch it essentially, but just a fitting ending, honestly. And you know what else is a shame? The fact that I was sitting there when George Kirby gave up the back, the back to back home runs to De La Cruz and to Josh Bell. And I was getting mad at George Kirby in my head. You know, I'm like, come on, George. Then I'm sitting there. I'm like, Kirby went seven innings, gave up two earned runs. That should be a win. Well, like, I feel like with this pitching staff, if they're not going seven shutout, they're not getting the W. But George Kirby should be getting a win with that line. Stanek was great. Munoz was great. Vote through one pitch, gave up a hit after the Mariners didn't score in the 10th. I mean, did any of us think they were going to win that still? I mean, I think we kind of knew that was going to happen. Just atrocious from this offense. And just uh, bad at bats. And, you know, they were talking during the broadcast. Miami swings at the most pitches out of the zone. The Mariners, you know, take a lot of pitches and everything, which is fine. I'm all for being patient, but I don't know. I feel like this team has a lot of first strikes that are down the middle that they just let go by. And I'm not against patience. I'm all for getting on base and working the count. Sometimes you get that first pitch, you got to drive it. I don't know. I, I don't know, but just, just awful. Let's look at that eighth inning because I really want to focus on that eighth inning. So Victor Robles singles, steals, steals second. Ryan Bliss singles, you have first and third, nobody out. Now, let me be clear. Robles and Bliss did not hit the snot out of the ball in their at-bats in the eighth inning. Robles was a little dribbler. Bliss was an infield hit. 
but both, you know, utilize their skills. They've got good speed, put the ball in play, good things happen. First and third, nobody out. Top of the order coming up. Not, this isn't JP Julio reached, and then you had Sebi Zavala. I know Sebi's not on the roster anymore, but Sebi Zavala and Victor Robles and someone else coming up where you're like, eh, you know, it happens. No, top of the order with runners at the corner. Truthfully, had the Mariners scored one run in that situation, I would have been a little disappointed. I'm like, eh, would have liked more there, but I'll take it. Three of the worst at-bats I have seen. And I do not care the home plate ump missed the strike one call or the what should have been ball one on JP and the strike three on Dylan Moore. Yeah, I blasted Doug Eddings the other day because Eddings was terrible all around. Who was it tonight? I think it was Bill Miller was the ump tonight. He was actually, yeah, it was Bill Miller. He was actually pretty decent. Yes, the first pitch to JP probably should have been a ball. So what? Like, the, I, I get it. Like, I get that changes the count. I get that puts JP down 0-1. He's more susceptible to that slider. I do get it. But that's still terrible swings. That is still two awful swings on sliders, not even close. Dylan Moore was punched down a ball. Probably was. He also missed two middle-middle sliders the first two pitches. Do something with those pitches and it doesn't matter. JP, lay off the slider. Now, look, baseball's hard. I'm not trying to preach as in, like, how do you not know how to do that? Like, you know, I, I would not even be able to swing a bat in time to catch up to a 70 mile per hour changeup. So I'm not like personally lecturing anybody on baseball, but these are professionals, right? That they're supposed to be able to get, get it done in those situations. You could have grounded into a double play and scored a run and you probably win that game three to two. Those are, that was three of the worst at bats ever after Victor Robles and Ryan bliss get on base for you. And come on, like right now, Victor Robles is like your best hitter. He's like the only guy I'm not mad at in this lineup. JP, 0 for 1 for 4, had the base hit early. Dylan Moore, 0 for 4, terrible game. Julio, 1 for 4. That at bat by Julio was just as atrocious. Yes, there was two outs, so, you know, you're not just looking for a sack fly there. But Julio swung at two pitches that didn't even touch the strike zone. Atrocious at bat, not even giving yourself a chance. Mitch Garver had an RBI sack fly to walk. Cal Raleigh was awful. Cal was bad. And I thought he should have made that play on that can zone throw. Did I say that already? It's my second time recording the video. Maybe it took a weird bounce on him. I don't know if I'm repeating myself. Just forgive me. Um, that was a good throw from can zone. Maybe it took a little weird hop on Cal. Cal was awful. Cal's OPS is 656. Listen, Cal gets a little more value from being a catcher. But Cal's not been good at the plate for a while. I mean, it, th th that's 656 is bad. You know, again, does Cal have value? Yes, he's a catcher. Even that's going to give him some value. Cal's got to be better. Ty was 0 for 3, did have a walk, and Ty scolded a ball that was caught. I, I just, Ty's come back. He's been a walk machine. I, I'm not really, Ty gets a little bit of a pass for me. Um, you know, be, be better, obviously. 0 for 3 isn't great, but, you know, he was fine overall. Mitch Hanniger, 0 for 4. OPS is 613. Victor Robles is a better player than Mitch Hanniger. Mitch Hanniger is not a good defensive. I know I'm repeating what I said yesterday. He's not a good defensive player. He's not good on the base paths. And he's not hitting. Guys, that's a bad combo. Even Listen, Victor Robles is not going to hit this well all year. But even if he doesn't, he's a good defender and can run the bases. That gives you more value. I love Mitch Hanniger. Love Mitch Hanniger. And, and I hope he stays on this team. But... Can, can we give him a coaching role? I mean, he's got to heat up. I'm not trying to be the, the guy's fighting. I know nobody works harder than Mitch Hanniger. Nobody. You can read any articles on it. Like, that was one of the things with Jesse Winker a couple of years ago. They kind of felt the work ethic wasn't there. Winker could have improved on his defense, was never really out there doing it. Meanwhile, Mitch Hanniger, every night, is taking BP and working on something. Absolutely rooting for Mitch Hanniger. I love him. He, he is one of the, a, a merit of great. Keep him in the coaching staff, whatever you need to do. I want him in that in that clubhouse. But man, the player has got to be better because what is he offering you right now? I get the leadership stuff, but you can do that without being on the roster. I, I'm all for that stuff. But as a player, he is giving you nothing right now. And he's not hitting lefties. Like that, that should be the one thing where you go, okay, Mitch Hanniger can play against left-handed pitching. And he's not hitting them. 
Uh, Victor Robles was one for three. Also drilled one that I thought was going to be a double over, uh, I think, Dela Cruz's head. Robles done a nice job. Robles has been good. Ryan Bliss, three for three. A um, couple singles and a uh, triple that scored run. His first career triple and his first career caught stealing. Uh, Canzone pinched hit for Bliss. I really don't have a problem with that. I never. I, I do think I, I probably would have had Rayleigh pinch hit for Hanniger earlier instead of having Rayleigh run for Garver in the eighth, or was that the ninth? Yeah, Mitch Garver led off of the walk. Rayleigh ran for him, then Cal grounds into the double play. I know Luke Rayleigh's a good base runner. I'm not against that, but I'd like to use Luke Rayleigh's bat, not just his running ability at some point there. So, uh, But I didn't have a problem with Canzone pinch hitting for Bliss there against um, Bender. I, I thought that was fine, to be honest. I know some people are like, oh, Bliss was three for three. I get it, but I, I do think that's a spot where I'm using Rayleigh or Canzone, uh, to be perfectly honest. So, but it, it's, and here's the thing, you know, uh, is it Trevor Rogers? I, why do I always miss first name? Trevor Rogers, just not very good. In 75 innings, 60 strikeouts. The Savant page is blue. He gets ground balls and he has good extension. Now that matters. Like if you can get, it goes to show if you can get ground balls, you can stick around in the league because you're keeping the ball in the ballpark. You'll have a chance to get out of innings. But, I mean, he's just, it's not good. And how many strikeouts did he roll today? Even he gets five. I know it's six and a third, so that's not great. But, I, you know, yeah, and you get, here's the thing too. Rodgers goes six and a third. The first two innings, Maris had some great at-bats for up two nothing. Rodgers had like 45 pitches. How do you let him still go six and a third? Just awful, 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 awful performance from this offense. And listen, I, 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 I'm not going to get to, oh, you're going to lose the division lead. Like, you still got a pretty substantial lead here. You, you're going to have to win another game this year. I will be very clear on that. You will not be able to coast with 44 wins to win the division. So I, it's not even that I'm not worried about. It's just I want to see this team play better. And eventually, you know, Texas is getting healthier. Houston, too. It, you know, they're cutting into the lead a little bit. Got to get some wins, guys. I'm not expecting the Mayors to win the division by 10 games. Let me be very clear. But I would like that 10-game lead to not be gone 10 days later, is all I'm saying. Please win tomorrow. Uh, Jesus Lazardo was scratched. That's a nice plus for you, um, for you meaning the Mariners. So you're probably getting some sort of bullpen spot start. Should be someone that you should be able to hit. You, you, you got to find a way, guys. You, you can't, can't have another performance like tonight. Can't. Win the series. I can forgive it. But, man, I don't like it. Did not like that game tonight at all. At all, I, there's not every loss is created equal, and, and that was that was a bad one because it, it's not just that they that they lost. Like I never expect sweeps. Still got a chance to win a series. Logan Gilbert going tomorrow. Feel pretty good about Logan on the hill. It, it, it's just that it, it, the way it played out should have been a win. Pitching did its job. I, like I said, I'm going to get into it. Kirby was fine. Don't even care. You know, oh, he gives some hard contact. So what? He wins seven innings, gave up two and runs. Should win that game. Awful job by the offense. Be better tomorrow. Be better tomorrow. Um, some positives, like I said, Lazardo scratch tomorrow. That should help you. Listen, this team's still a substantial division lead. Like I said, this is one of the perks of having the big lead. If you can drop a few games like this and it won't kill you. They will win again. I can promise you the Mariners will have a W at some point. This is going to be the ultimate when the Mariners win 44 games all year. This is going to be clipped and people going, ah, but <laughs> they will. They, they will, they'll, they'll go another hot streak at some point. Um, you know, like I said, that's, that's the joy of that 10 game lead is it can allow you to go through a little struggle, still keep a five, six game lead, maybe get hot again and get that back up to seven or eight. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but gotta be better. I don't know what else to say. I'm out of here, guys. Still love this team. Be better guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be much later. Got a bit of a family day tomorrow. I actually won't even be able to watch the game. So I'm not sure what time the post game will be up, but, uh, you know, just bear with me on that, everybody. So take care. Enjoy your Friday night. Go do something else. Don't watch baseball and go Mariners. Peace.